Welcome to Redefining Medicine, an intimate and personalized program that illustrates a different side of the practice of medicine. Our in-depth conversations will focus on the physicians and practitioners who are redefining medicine through their integrative, functional, and holistic approach to health and well-being. Our host for Redefining Medicine is Dr. Erica Schwartz. For more than 20 years, Dr. Erica has been at the forefront of advanced patient care, taking the best from conventional and integrative medicine and applying them to prevent disease. Dr. Erica is a distinguished A4M faculty member in disciplines ranging from hormone therapy, peptide therapy, and IV nutritional support. Hi, welcome to Redefining Medicine. We're here at the Expo, in the Expo Hall, and we're so lucky to be interviewing today in Las Vegas at Longevity Fest 2023, Dr. Terry Walls. Please listen to her story. Thank you for joining me. Hey, thank it's you so for nice. having me. It's so nice to have you. Tell me your story. I don't even want to ask because I feel like your story is so amazing that yeah. only you say it. The right okay, way. so in 2000, I developed stumbling. I see my neurologist, go through the big workup, and I learned that I have relapsing remitting multiple sclerosis. Now at that time, I've already had 20 years of worsening electrical face pain, tried general neuralgia. Uh, and so I do my research, I find the best MS center, see the, be the best physician, take the newest drugs. Three years later, age 48, I'm in a tilt recline wheelchair. Uh, I take minozantrone, does not help. I take Tizabri, does not help. Then I ask myself, am I doing all that I can? And I start reading the basic science. I decide mitochondria drive disability. It creates a supplement cocktail. Slows my decline. I'm very grateful. Um, by the summer of 2007, I cannot sit up anymore. I'm in a zero gravity chair with my knees higher than my nose. I, my trigeminal neuralgia is relentlessly worse. I'm beginning to have brain fog. It's very clear to me I'm on track to become bedridden by my illness, demented by my illness, and probably die with intractable pain. Now, and you're now how old? 52. That's obscene. It, it's uh, terrible. Now, fortunately, I discovered the Institute for Functional Medicine. I take their course on neuroprotection. I have a longer list of supplements for my mitochondria. I add those. I discover electrical stimulation of muscles. I add that to my rehab. And then I had this big aha, and I laugh now that it took me this long to have it. I'd been doing a paleo diet for five years. But then, like, what if I redesign my diet, paleo diet, based on what I'd learned? And I, a few more months of research, I, I eat this new way starting in December 26, 2007. Now, keep in mind, I can't sit up. Unbelievable. I could take just a few steps with two walking sticks. A month later, it's clear, my mind is more clear, I have more energy, I have less pain. My physical therapist says, Terry, you're stronger. I can now do my exercises 10 minutes twice a day, then 15 twice a day, then 20 minutes twice a day, then 30 minutes twice a day. Then I start walking at the hospital, two walking sticks, then with one, then with none. And then on Mother's Day, I tell my wife I want to try riding my bike, which I've not done in six years. So, we have an emergency family meeting. She tells my 16-year-old boy, Zach, you jog alongside on the left. My daughter, who's 13, Zeb, you jog on the side on the right. She'll follow. And we all get in position. And I bike around the block. You know, and that big 16-year-old boy, he's crying. The 13-year-old girl, she's crying. My wife's crying. You should be crying. Right? And when I relive that moment, I'm... I, I begin crying because that's when I, the current understanding of secondary progressive MS is incomplete. Who knows how much recovery might be possible? So every day I bike a little bit more. And then in October, Jackie says, honey, I've signed us up for the Courage Ride. It's 18.5 miles. Wow. However far you go, it will be great. Right. And I cross the finish line. Amazing. And once again, Amazing. we're all crying, you know? Amazing. And so this fundamentally changes how I think about disease and health. It will change the way I practice medicine. It will change the focus of my research. And I've made it my mission now. So I, 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 I teach 
clinicians, I teach uh, the consumers that there's a lot we can do to stabilize and reverse progressive neuroimmune and neurodegenerative uh, conditions. So let me back up a little bit here. So you're a conventionally trained doctor. Absolutely. So you were practicing conventional medicine. What was your training in? Uh, internal medicine. Uh, and yeah, you know, actually, I was a physician leader. I was uh, head of a five-state regional network uh, for the VA. Then I uh, pulled back from that because traveling got to be too, just too difficult. And then, you know, I become more and more and more disabled. Fortunately, I was assigned to the Institutional Review Board to review research as part of making my my life a little easier. And that got me more comfortable reading the basic science, experimenting on myself. Right, so my question is, how did you make the transition? Because we're all conventionally trained, and we actually believe that the medication, whatever we oh, were doing, I, I, would help, right? And you believed it for three years. Yes. So, when, when I, when I, when I hit, hit the wheelchair, right. and, I, you know, and it's clear I can't sit up, can't sit up, can't sit up, it's like, God, am I doing all that I can? So I start reading the basic science. I start thinking about what I could access, which were supplements. So I, I focused on supplements at first. How did you think supplements would be an answer? How did that well, compute given what we're training? Because that was the research I could find. Interesting. You know, and it was supplement-based research uh, around improving mitochondrial bioenergetics. And it was for Parkinson's, for Alzheimer's. Uh, for Huntington's, for mm -hmm. ALS. Right. Uh, and so this was what year, sorry? Uh, that started in 2004. Okay, so that's early. That's early. In the 1990s, people, yeah. conventional medicine was like, anything you're talking about, supplements, you're a quack. Correct, correct. So yeah, you're yeah. now in 2000. 2004. Right. And what I saw was the supplements, you know, the first six months I was taking these, it didn't really nothing changed. After six months, I thought, I'm wasting my money. So I stopped them. Of course. And I couldn't get out of bed. Yeah. And on the third day, uh, Jackie says, you know, honey, why don't you, why don't you try taking these again? Right. So I took them, and the next morning, I could get up and go to work again. So you were working, seeing patients, and right. doing work all so, time. Of course. So right, right. So I was still working. And since I could, I could go to work, I thought, wow, that was really interesting. So two weeks later, I told Jack, I'm, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm stopping all the supplements. Hmm. I waited three days. You know, I went downhill, sure. couldn't function. Proof on the third of day, yeah, third day, I took the supplements. Like, okay, they they aren't fixing me, but they're clearly they're doing something because I'm way worse without them. So uh, at that point, with progressive MS, my understanding was there is no recovery of function. Right. Functions once lost That's are gone what forever. You're here. Right, that's what I, you're taught. It, that's what I was taught, that's what mm -hmm. was accepted. And so if all I could do was slow my decline, I'm very grateful. Interesting, yeah. And so I was thrilled, I was, clear, I was slowing my decline, I was very grateful. You know, I discovered electrical stimulation of muscles. Right. Uh, and that was for a study for people who are paralyzed, never gonna walk, but improve their quality of life. So I convinced my physical therapist to give me a test session. He says, Terry, I, I can grow over your muscles, but..." I don't know that your brain can talk to those muscles. I might be making it harder for you to, right. to walk. Right. But he gave me a test session, hurt like hell, but it was remarkable how much better my mood was after the session. Your so brain woke up to it. My, my brain woke up. Right. And we now know that E-STEM, electrical stimulation, mm -hmm. releases more nerve growth factors in the brains, which is probably why I just loved doing E-STEM. And in fact, even though I can now jog, I still do e-stim an hour a day because I love the cognitive uh, impact, on impact that I have. That's amazing. Um, I was going to ask you more about the supplements. How did you decide which supplements you would take? Were you talking to anyone? Oh, no, no, I, I was talking to PubMed. PubMed. I was talking to PubMed. PubMed, right. That's all we <laughs> do is, right? I, I was talking to PubMed, uh, reading articles, and, and mind you, I'm an internal medicine doc, so reading this basic science yeah. neuro stuff right. was a lot of work. Right. So it was I a know. lot of work reading right. all those papers, sort of right. sorting out what the mechanisms what were. Sense. Right. Uh, and this was all about what would improve 
the mitochondrial function. Now, you know, I, I get smarter about all of that now. Right. And, and now I, everybody knows it's mitochondrial. It, it's mitochondrial. <laughs> you have to right. optimize the mitochondria. Right. That's right. Amazing. So you found the supplements. You decided what the supplements the, were. The supplements were very helpful. And I continue to uh, tinker and refine, add some more supplements. Oh, the science has gotten further. You know, this is about uh, adding more of the essential fats, more of the minerals, the B it's vitamins. It's about the diet, right? Creatine, carnitine, right. lipoic acid. Of course. All these things are really great. But the magic happens diet. when I redesign my paleo diet based on this long list of supplements, where are these things in the food supply? Where are you getting them from? Uh, and so, so what did you do? Yeah. Um, and so those are a couple more months of research to figure out where that stuff was. At the high level, right. um, I added more organ meat, more liver, heart, tongue, yes. gizzards. Yes. Um, we added lots of greens, uh, so f uh, filled with nitrates, uh, uh, lutein, le um, mesoxanthin, zeoxanthin, uh, carotenoids, uh, folate, uh, 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 the deeply colored uh, Dark beets, greens. Right, right. right. Mm -hmm. uh, beets, carrots, etc. cetera, uh, fermented foods, uh, a lot of uh, sulfur-rich foods, cabbage, onion, mushrooms. So I ramped up the non-starchy vegetables and berries. And I went back to eating liver once a week. You know, when I was a kid on the farm, we had liver every, every Friday. And if you yeah. complained, you got a second serving. Terrible. Oh, horrible. And so you were already doing the paleo diet, the paleo diet to begin right. with. So so I'd been doing the, right. So I've been doing the. Right. So I was doing the paleo diet five years, uh, did not stop my decline. I did supplements, did, slowed my decline. I was very grateful. I uh, added electrical stimulation. I felt great afterwards. And I was slowly getting better. But when I redesigned that paleo diet, it started you know, December 26th. In a month's time, it's clear that my physical therapist says, my God, you're stronger. He's advancing my exercises. My mental clarity is improving. My energy is remarkably better. And I mean, I remember the, the day I said, you know, honey, I'd like to sit at the table in a regular chair. And so, you know, I, I sat in a regular chair and I actually sat up upright for supper with my family. Now, mind you, for the previous four years, we, we couldn't go out to eat. I couldn't go to a movie because I could not sit up anymore. Then you thought you were dying because you were told you were going to die. Well, uh, I was dying a, a, a slow, withering right, right. death. Right. Unbelievable. So talk to me about the diet now. Yep. So, so did you stay with the diet? Did you stay with the supplements? What, what did so, you do? Uh, yeah, I stayed with the supplements. I continue to, to experiment with the supplements. I've redesigned, you know, this diet that we all know as the Wallace diet, the Wallace mm -hmm. protocol. Right. And it's dramatic how rapidly things change. To go from being unable to sit up to six months later biking around the block, I mean, walking miles. around the block, and then it, in a year's time, 18.5 miles. It's stunning. Amazing. And then, you know, this last week before coming here, I can jog 20 minutes in my neighborhood. Amazing. Extraordinary. And, you know, this is into longevity. I, I finally had my telomeres checked. And, and you know, super interesting. I, I'm mentally bracing myself like, okay, I have secondary progressive MS, neuro a disease of accelerated aging. To you. So my telomeres may tell me that I'm older than my chronologic age, maybe. maybe I'm like, okay, I'll just you know, check them every couple of years, see if I'm aging more slowly or not. Well, hell, I'm 15 years younger biologically than my chronologic age. I'm not surprised. Why, were you, why did you expect, well, given that you are improving, given correct. that we're taught that you don't improve, given that you had done all these changes that got you back up, why would you think that well, I was hopeful. wouldn't follow? I, I was hopeful that it would, I would not be severely older than my chronologic age. But I was like, wow, no, you're not. That's, you know, that's pretty good. Yeah, you know, in, in, in my clinics, when we, when we use, put people basically in the Walls Protocol, the VA had me create a new clinic called, we called it the Therapeutic Lifestyle Clinic. People would come with many, many different medical problems, 20 to 30 different medications that they're on. 
we get them on the program, and they youth in, in front of us very consistently. We see them youth in five to 10 years over the next six months. And we were extraordinarily successful at teaching them how to radically change what they're eating, right. uh, begin exercising, uh, pay more attention to sleep. And we were helping people do this who were living in rural Iowa, shopping in small town, rural, rural, tiny grocery stores, living on food stamps often. When people say, you know, I can't do the Walls Protocol because I'm not a doc, I, I can't go to Whole Foods. And I'm like, the people I taught to do this at the VA were not going to Whole Foods. Right. They were doing this on food stamps. They were disabled, they weren't working. And no, yes, if they could have gotten organic food, they would have recovered more quickly, sure. But it's still. They changing. could recover. Yes. We got remarkable results. And we were extraordinarily successful because I was able to incorporate, you know, I ended up creating a, a new behavior change model based on uh, our research, my clinical experience, and the uh, work that I did with the uh, health psychologist. So we have this detailed 15-step process that I take people through. It begins with asking, what do you want your health for? Mm. Yeah. And, and the really informative question can be, if your house you know, is having you smoke light out of the window, mm -hmm. is there something or someone you care so much about that you would run into that house to go save, even though it's beginning to be on fire. It's usually a child, a grandchild. It might be a dog. I was going to say a dog. It might be a cat. Of <laughs> and if there's no one, then I have to send them to mental health because we have to have a purpose for their life. Exactly. If you don't have any purpose exactly. for your life, you won't endure the discomfort that it takes to create better health habits. Right. Well, it's a purpose. It's you have to have purpose. purpose. Amazing. Because we can endure a lot when we have purpose. Yes, totally. So, you know, I, I, I'm doing a, a clinical trial comparing a ketogenic diet to a modified paleo diet to usual diet for people with relapsing, remitting, for, with relapsing, remitting multiple sclerosis between the ages of 18 and 70. Uh, and we want them to go to terrywalls.com forward slash MS study so they can learn more about the study and then complete a little survey to see if they're eligible. I'm trying to get 156 people in. We're up to 120. So we've got 30. How long have you been doing it? How long well, have you been trying? So I've, get I've been recruiting for 18 months. Oh, hmm. So it's so extraordinary. This will help. This will help, this help because it won't have all the the viewership of the A4M. Right. And the membership of the A4M. So you guys will get me the last 36. For sure. And so that'll be marvelous. I'm going to look it up. And look at yeah, because this will be the largest, longest diet study done in the study of MS. And we're going to have MRIs at the beginning, MRIs at the end. Uh, we have a lot of uh, frozen blood. So we'll be able to do biomarkers yeah. as well. What biomarkers are you going to use? Well, I'll have to write another grant to get funding for that, but things that we'll want to look at will be a change in gene expression, change in metabolomics, change in the uh, oral microbiome. You know, uh, some of the talks I was hearing today, such as the uh, Akamensia talk, they'll be mm -hmm. super interesting yeah, right. to see yeah. what, what's happening out there, yeah. uh, what's happening with gene expression, that will be very interesting, what's happening with metabolomics mm -hmm. uh, and cytokines, that will be super interesting. And, be and then we'll be able to correlate that with changes what, in our clinical outcomes, doing, right? changes in patient reported outcomes, changes in brain structure. Mm -hmm. This will be a transformational I love study. It. I love it. Well, it's an honor. Thank it's you. An honor to have it. Thank you.